I've built LEGO robots for 20 years, but making one that parks better than me is a first. My LEGO Spike Prime self-driving car can smoothly follow lines on the road, navigate around obstacles and drive as straight as an arrow. So I'm going to show you how it pulls off all these feats and finish with a trick you'll want to copy right away. Making a stylish ride with only the handful of decorative parts in the Spike Prime set is no small feat. I started designing the drivetrain. As long as the car goes straight, the wheels are driven at the same speed. Let's look at what happens when your car takes a corner. The outside wheel has to spin faster. That's where a clever piece of engineering called a differential comes in. It lets each wheel spin at its own speed, so the car wheels don't skid when traveling along a curve. Too bad, the Spike Prime set doesn't include the differential. I tried to improvise with a simple clutch power design fitting this LEGO stud in this hole to let the drive axle connected to the wheel drag the other wheel but still allow it to slip a bit. It didn't quite work. One wheel was not keeping up with the other when the car was driving straight and the car started drifting sideways. So I went back to basics and just connected both wheels axles together. It's not perfect, I know, but for our project it gets the job done. I used this large motor to power the wheels through a set of bevel gears. With the driving sorted out, let's turn our attention to steering. Instead of using a bunch of gears, I went with simple linkages. The servo shaft makes this short link swing, thus deforming this 4 bar linkage and making the car steer. Now, in real cars, the steering system is designed so the wheels naturally straighten themselves out after a turn. That's called the caster effect. Since our simple LEGO steering mechanism cannot center itself, I needed a workaround. That's why I added this rubber band. It removes the play almost completely. At this stage, the car can already drive around. Let's move on to programming it so I can show you what it can do already. But wait, there's more to it, even before we keep building it. Did you notice? I left just enough room to sneak in a light sensor here, on the bottom. It just takes a bit, actually a lot, of patience to manage the cables. With this sensor, you can program your car to follow a bold line on the ground, whether it's black on white or white on a dark surface. Suddenly, your simple steering system can do some pretty clever tricks. We're just skimming the code for now. Going block by block would be super dull for most people watching, but I know some of you would love that level of detail, so I've put the full step-by-step -step version on my website. And now let's test it out. Let's see what else we can add to make it even smarter. Let's add the driver's head. So it looks like this autonomous car is actually being driven by someone. Just what I needed, more cable management. More! Cable management. And here it is, with big googly eyes made from the spike distance sensor. Time to build the body, using these pieces which are pretty weird in a robotics kit. Well, what do you think? On the very front, let's put this world printed round tile, so we can pretend it's the car brand logo. But let's swap it for my actual logo. Ah, much better. If you want to build and learn how to build robots that you fully understand and that do what you want, I invite you to join my academy. I'll leave a link below this video. Now that the car has its driver, let's make it even more autonomous. Let's first give it the ability to avoid the obstacle on its own. You see, in explorer mode, when it finds something in front of it, the driver looks left and right. Then it turns the way where it sees more space to keep exploring. Even with the self-centering rubber band, the car drifts. But we can use the hub's built-in gyroscope to compensate and steer just enough to go as straight as spaghetti before they hit the pot. Mm -hmm. 
By using the gyro, we can even make it go round in loops and change direction always in the same spot. And now, let's face the biggest challenge of all times, parallel parking. Ha! Cheater! I wish it was so simple, but with a steering car, it's way more difficult unless you know the secret. First, the driver head is turned to the right to find and align it to an empty parking slot. Then, it performs a series of maneuvers to park. It's really satisfying to watch. But wait, there's even more! I promised you a bonus trick, remember? So, do you want full control? You could replace the standard firmware with the excellent Pybrix alternative one and control your car with this LEGO Train remote or even with an Xbox controller. So let's see how it handles on a real test drive. Want to pull this off too? I've got you covered. In the next video, I'll show you how to build and program the bare chassis with driving and steering. Watch this next.